What is up, everybody? I'm your host of Browning and Stave, and a lot of people are saying that the Oz Fetterman debate pushed a lot of the undecided voters in Pennsylvania towards Oz, and we put together some clips to show you why that might be. So hit like, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. Let's take a look at how the debate started. You're running for a seat that could decide the balance of power in Washington. What qualifies you to be a U.S. Senator? You have 60 seconds. Hi, good night, everybody. Not a great start. Maybe he was just in a hurry to get home. Let's take a look at how it continued. Mr. Fetterman, I do have a specific question, which you can continue on this topic, but you have made two conflicting statements regarding fracking. In a 2018 interview, you said, quote, I don't support fracking at all. I never have. But earlier this month, you told an interviewer, quote, I support fracking. I support the energy independence that we should have here in the United States. So, Mr. Fetterman, please explain your changing position. 60 seconds. Uh, I, I've, I've always supported fracking. And I always believe that independence with our energy is, is critical. We can't be held, you know, you know, ransom to somebody like Russia. You know, I've always believed that energy independence is critical, and I've always believed that, and I do support fracking. I've never taken any money from their, their, their industry, but I support how critical it is that we produce our own energy and create energy independence. I must correct the record. Uh, well, he uh, just a second, Mr. Oz. I do want to clarify something. You're saying tonight that you support fracking, that you've always supported fracking, but there is that 2018 interview that you said, quote, I don't support fracking at all. So how do you square the two? Oh, uh, I, I, I do support fracking and I don't, I don't, I support fracking and I stand and I do support fracking. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fetterman. So of course, no real answer for his blatant flip-flop on fracking, just visible confusion that the moderator is actually doing their job and holding him to account. But let's keep going. Mr. Fetterman, I will allow a 15 second rebuttal. He has specifically said you have not paid your taxes and that you wanna raise taxes on Americans. How do you respond? Uh, absolutely. The Oz rule, of course, he's lying. It was helping two students 17 years ago to help them, you know, buy their own homes. They, they didn't pay the bills and it got her paid and it has never been an issue in, in any of the campaign before. It was all about nonprofit. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fetterman. How is that an answer? Sir, you didn't pay your taxes 60 plus times. How do you respond? No, no, no. I just, I bought a house for some college kids and they didn't pay for it. Okay. Why didn't you pay your taxes? I don't know. All right. I will allow a 15 second rebuttal to his comments that you have been making things in China. Mr. Oz. I've been trying to talk about policy issues with the people of Pennsylvania. As a doctor, I listen to their ideas and I want to talk about them. When John Fetterman brings up houses, the irony is he didn't pay for his own house. He got it for a dollar from his sister. And he hasn't been able to, to earn a living on his own. He's lived off his parents. So it, it, it doesn't, it's not a topic that we should be debating on the stage. We should be talking about crime and inflation, the issues that are hurting Pennsylvanians that they're talking about at their kitchen table. Uh, it, it, uh, that, that's it. He, uh, he got his... Pennsylvania right, House Mr. from his own inlays from a, a dollar. Mr. That's Fetterman, typical. we have to continue on. You're a hooker! Well, wait. This interaction was hilarious. Why is Pennsylvania House in quotes? The house is in Pennsylvania. What the hell is an inlay? And also, it's documented fact that Fetterman is a freeloader who got his house for a dollar from his sister. Dr. Oz might own multiple houses, but at least he paid for them. In an op-ed for the Wilkes-Barre Times leader, you wrote, quote, it is time we crack down on the big price gouging corporations that are making record profits while jacking up prices for all of us. How do you plan to do this, sir? You mentioned price going after price gouging corporations. How do you plan to do this? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, exactly. We have to keep pushing back on that. And he would never make that choice to, to fight for uh, for, for uh, America. Uh, families here in Pennsylvania. You know, he has never met an air, uh, uh, an oil company that he doesn't swipe right about. You know, he has never been able to stand up for working families all across Pennsylvania. You know, we must push back. Inflation has hurt Americans and Pennsylvania's families, and it has given the oil companies record profits. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Fetterman. Not only does he not answer the question at all, he doesn't really even say anything. The only competent part of this sentence is the part where he's insulting Dr. Oz, which, again, doesn't answer the question of how are you going to stop this price gouging you're saying is happening. To be clear, you said you want people making a lot more, but that's not through a federal law of minimum wage. That's through market forces? Market forces should drive okay. it up anyway, and it's already yeah. done that. Thank you. You, know, you should be able to get paid much more than $15 an hour. Thank you. Lisa. As I was watching this debate, I noticed Dr. Oz doing a little bit of his own dancing on this question, claiming to answer it but doing anything but, saying, yes, I will fight to raise the wage, or no, I will not fight to raise the wage. It's a simple question. Just answer it. Average voter in Pennsylvania believes it's appropriate. Now, ironically, John Fetterman has been running ads on this topic, dishonest ads. I need to correct the record. They were so bad, they got pulled off television stations. I've got, even on this station, they, he was running dishonest ads that I had pulled off. I haven't had a single ad pulled down. My ads tell the truth. John Fetterman's are a fiction of his imagination. All right, I'm going to let Mr. Fetterman respond specifically about the ads being pulled off the air, and then we will return to you, Mr. Oz. Mr. Fetterman. Yeah, I want to look into the face of every woman in Pennsylvania. You know, if you believe that the choice of your reproductive freedom belongs with Dr. Oz, then you have a choice. But if you believe that the choice for abortion belongs between you and your doctor, that's what I fight for. Roe v. Wade, for me, is should be the law. He celebrated when Roe v. Wade went down, and my campaign would fight for Roe v. Wade, and if given the opportunity to codify it into law. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fetterman. Fetterman once again completely ignores the question about him lying so badly in campaign ads that they get pulled from television. He didn't even do like the DC dip and twirl where he acknowledges the question and then trails off into something completely different. He just completely ignored the question. This guy is disconnected from reality. Thank you, Lisa. Let's turn to what has become one of the key themes of this race, fitness to serve. For these individual questions, there will be no rebuttals allowed. Mr. Fetterman, we begin with you. You suffered, as you mentioned a moment ago, a stroke four days before the May primary. Last week, you released this note from your doctor saying you can work full duty in public office, but you have not released your detailed medical records surrounding your stroke. Mr. Fetterman, will you pledge tonight to release those records in the interest of transparency? You have 60 seconds. No. Uh, to me, for transparency, is about showing up. I'm here today to have a debate. I have you know, spe speeches in front of 3,000 people in Montgomery County, you know, all across Pennsylvania, big, big crowds. You know, I believe if my doctor believes that I'm fit to serve and, and that's what I believe is appropriate. And now with two weeks before the election, you know, I have run a campaign and I've been very transparent about being very open about the fact we're in use captioning. And I believe that again, my doctors, the real doctors that I believe in, they all believe that I'm ready to be served. Follow up, I didn't hear you say you would release your full medical records, why not? You have 30 seconds. No, uh, you know, again, my doctor all believes that I'm fit to be serving, and that's what I believe is where I'm standing. Okay, Mr. Fetterman, thank you. Mr. And once again, a lot of words, but no answer. But don't worry, folks, his doctors feel that he is ready to be served, whatever that means. Mr. Fetterman, Republicans have called you dangerously soft on crime. The Pennsylvania State Troopers Association has endorsed Democrat Josh Shapiro for governor. But in this race, it endorsed your Republican opponent, Mr. Oz. What is your response to those endorsements? And what is your response to accusations that you are, quote, dangerously soft on crime? You have 60 seconds. No. No. I, 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 I believe that I run on my record on crime. You know, I ran to be mayor back in 2005 in order to fight gun violence, and that's exactly what I did. In working with the police and working with our community, I was, say, I was able to stop gun violence for five and a half years as mayor, ever accomplished before or since my time as, as mayor, because I'm the only person on this stage right now that has con con was successful about pushing back against gun violence and being the community more safe. You know, all he's done is just put a plan up on his website in the last 24 hours. He has no experience. He has never made any attempt to try to address crime during his entire career, except showing up for photo ops here in Philadelphia. I will give you 15. I run on my record on crime.
Sir, that is a terrible idea. The town of Braddock, where he was mayor, crime surged during his mayorship, and it declined almost as soon as he left. That speaks for itself. This guy isn't tough on crime, he's just tough to watch. One lie after another, and that's when he actually decides to answer the question and not just completely ignore it. If you were wondering why people are saying this debate pushed people towards Dr. Oz, this is why. Anyway, that's it for this one. I will see you all next time.